So I've been running a heart attack stroke prevention uh, uh, program for a couple of years. I've actually been in general prevention for many years. I'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But working in heart attack and stroke prevention, you have a lot of people come in to see you that are taking red yeast rice, um, eating it, or buying supplements. And yes, for those of you who didn't know, it's actually a uh, yeast. It's, a, it's got a red component to it. It's been used in China for a very long time. We'll talk, actually talk about that. It's been used to color things like what used to be called Peking duck. Remember that's red? That red came from the rice in red yeast uh, rice. I mean from the yeast in red, red yeast rice. I keep wanting to call it red rice yeast. Anyway, <clears throat> so those folks that come to see me that are on that uh, supplement I usually don't like what I have to say. Um, however, that's not the majority of patients. The majority of patients that have been on red yeast riced, rice um, have quit it. And why? So <clears throat> we'll talk about that in just a minute. Why, why do folks, why have folks quit red yeast rice, and um, why do they not like what I have to say about it? Why do those that are taking it not like what I have to say about it? But first, an introduction. Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E I'm a uh, prevention doc. I have been most of my life. I, uh, when I first finished uh, my training, I went into emergency medicine. Was very disappointed by all of the preventable. Uh, heart attack, stroke, disability uh, that I saw. I went to Johns Hopkins for training, ended up running the program there. But what might be more interesting for uh, many folks is my own personal uh, journey in this area. After close to 30 years of prevention and eating a plant-based diet, I had my first CIMT. It's a, um, it's a specific type of uh, ultrasound of the carotid arteries of the neck. And it basically uh, gives you a nomogram which estimates your arterial age based on the amount of plaque that you have. At age 57, in February of 2015, I had the, age, the uh, plaque artery age of a 73-year-old at age 57. I broke down and started to do what I'd been avoiding for three years. I started taking statins. I did some other changes too, and you can see that in a, uh, a video that I've done, how to, how to drop your arterial age 20 years. <clears throat> um, since then, I've uh, discovered I have insulin resistance, as do over half of 60-year-olds. I'm 60 now. Um, <clears throat> oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you the punchline. Over that next year, by uh, September of 2016, I had dropped the plaque in my arteries to those of a 52-year-old. So you look at arterial age and um, chronological age. It started off at February 15, uh, February 2015, a 57-year-old with 73-year-old arteries. October 2015, 58-year-old with 59-year-old uh, arteries. So again, I started the statin early 2015. And September 2016, a 59-year-old with 52-year-old arteries and have continued to drop. Uh, that trend, um, I actually had several other uh, CIMTs in, during that period and um, that trend continued. It was a stable trend. So again, how did I do it? I, I hate to admit that to all of you folks out there who are statin haters, but the statins were a major component of that. Um, now, <clears throat> what about red rice yeast? It's very similar to statin, right? Well, let's go back. Let's talk about the history of red rice yeast. It was at red yeast rice. I told you I keep making that. I keep saying red rice yeast. So, <clears throat> Uh, it was recorded to be part of food as early as 300 B.C. in China. They were using it in, as medicine in the Tang Dynasty at 800 A.D. Um, 
the foods, it was using pickled tofu, uh, red rice vinegar, and again, as I mentioned earlier, the red coloring for a lot of different foods, like what used to be called Peking duck. Now, modern drug history, what's been going on recently? In the 1970s, U.S. and Japan developed lovastatin, uh, guys that Merck did. They did it from Aspergillus and uh, Monoscus. Many of you may recognize the term Aspergillus. It's a fungus, a mold. And guess what? Monoscus is the uh, yeast that's used in red yeast rice. So, <clears throat> why were they doing that? They found that it actually decreased cholesterol. Um, and again, I won't get too deep in, into statins and what they do, but I'm going to go a little bit uh, deeper into recent history on red yeast rice as a supplement. In 1998, the FDA developed a position that anything containing uh, monoculin uh, products are a drug. Uh, they banned uh, col cholestin. It was a red yeast rice product containing uh, monoculin. So that was consistent with their position. Now, this position, however, was taken to, it was um, taken to court, <coughs> and it was reversed by the decision of U.S. Uh, Court of Appeals. So about 2003, you start seeing the door open up to red yeast rice products. Um, the FDA still sends uh, warning letters to companies doing this. Um, red yeast rice supplements are, typically have 10 to 20 uh, milligrams of monoculins. Lovastatin, uh, Mevacor, the Merck product, typically contains 20 to 80 milligrams. So again, you're getting, um, if you get up to the higher dose of the supplement, you might as well be taking uh, Lovastatin. Now, <clears throat> I wouldn't take Lovastatin. Uh, there are different ones that I would, uh, I would focus on. And in fact, that's what I tell my patients. We've got uh, newer, better ones. And again, you can take them in much lower doses and get the impact that we really want, which usually doesn't have that much to do with cholesterol. It's got more to do with inflammation. And we've talked about that in several other videos. So what were the next steps after the, um, after the U.S. Court of Appeals overturned this FDA position that uh, monoculin-containing uh, supplements were illegal? Well, here come the patent uh, formula salesmen. Just Google red, rice, uh, red yeast rice on YouTube or the Internet, and you'll see it and hear it. Uh, lower doses than statins, yes. I mean, some of them don't even acknowledge that they do have the same chemicals as statins, the HMGA CoA reductases. Long word, not going to get into that right now. Um, but they say since they're lower, the ones that are transparent and open enough to say we do have the same chemicals will at least say, well, they're lower dose. And as I mentioned a minute ago, typically lower dose, but sometimes not. Uh, again, sometimes it depends on how, how much of that you're taking. Anyhow, they say it's safer. Uh, they also then go ahead and say, well, how can it be as effective then? Well, you must take it. It must be combined with specific other products uh, at specific amounts. And guess what? My product, uh, Colex Reduct. But whatever, you know, it, there's a gazillion of them out there. My product just happens to have that exact right combination. With what? Well, you'll typically hear that they're combining it with CoQ10 and maybe some vitamin D and some, again, some of the other products that um, have some impact. But again, um, uh, well, I'll just go on. <clears throat> Is it really safer? Well, lower doses um, very well may be. Um, what sort of problems do you get with it? Just very briefly, as you remember, liver function uh, problems, um, muscle soreness, and uh, up to 20% of people get muscle soreness with these chemicals. Um, you can go on to get rhabdomyolysis. What's that? It's a long word for a severe breakdown of the muscle tissue. 
Uh, what are the, um, where is this coming from? As I mentioned, the underlying class of chemicals that all these uh, statins use, HMG-CoA reductase. HMG-CoA uh, uh, activities, it's a process in the liver, whereby the liver actually makes uh, cholesterol and converts it from other products. So, <clears throat> do I recommend taking these? No, I've never taken these. And again, those of my patients that come to see me um, often will say, um, will be frustrated and ask me why I don't. Again, a couple of points. Number one, you're taking, uh, in some cases, uh, the very same medication that you'd get with, or chemical that you'd get with me Mevacor. There are better statins out there. Um, and you can go with lower doses. Uh, we will typically use, for a patient that needs a statin, a Crestor um, Rosuvastatin, much, much lower doses, uh, five milligrams per day. Um, it, it, those dosages, by the way, are not entirely comparable, but uh, we're not looking for LDL lowering or cholesterol lowering. We're looking for um, decrease in inflammation, and you get that. I've got some patients on uh, two and a half milligrams two or three times a week. Um, I've got some patients on uh, single dose. And again, we're seeing significant impact on inflammation. Again, I went on longer than I expected. It seems like I would learn, doesn't it? Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> and I'm sorry if you're a red yeast rice lover. <laughs>